some of my friends live for at least part of the time in the year 1450. They're part of a group of medieval reenactors called Buckingham's Retinue. At one of their events, I noticed that their wheelbarrow was looking a little bit worse for wear. But I suppose I'd look a bit worse for wear if I'd been knocking around for the best part of 600 years. They asked me if I'd like to try and tidy it up a bit. The wheel in particular was very wobbly, and in the framework all of the joints had become loose and wobbly, and the whole thing was held together by bits of rope. I thought I'd start with the wheel. To be honest, it wasn't very difficult to get out. The frame just eased apart and out it came. I started to clean it up and then I realised I'd have to completely dismantle it to make anything of it. The iron band round the outside took a bit of getting off. But after that, all the joints were so dry and loose, it just came apart very easily. I labelled up all the parts so that I could make sure they all went back together again in the same place. I thought I'd give the wheel rim some extra stability by uh, putting dowel joints in all around. It was going to be a bit tricky holding all the bits in the right place while I glued it together, so I made a bit of a makeshift jig by first cutting a hole in a piece of gash plywood. That allowed the wheel hub to poke through while the plywood supported all the pieces in about the right place while I jiggled them all into position. Having made sure it all fitted, I then glued it all up. And 
finally putting the iron band back around again and nailing it into place to hold it all into position while it sat. As with all my medieval pieces, I use hand-forged iron nails to maintain period authenticity. And when it's all dry, I just give it a quick check to make sure that it runs true. So that's the wheel done, and now I can turn my attention to the rest of the wheelbarrow. I decided to completely dismantle it so that I could assess the condition of all the parts and the joints and see what I'd have to do to make it all work properly again. I took the precaution of labelling up all the pieces so that I would know exactly which piece fitted where when I came to put it all back together again. Some of these uprights are loose in their sockets, but they won't come out. They're held in with dowels, I'll talk more about that later. The joints were all simple mortise and tenon joints, but with the added stability that a hole had been drilled through the mortise and through the tenon and a dowel put in to hold it all together tightly. It's a great system, but after prolonged use the joints do tend to work loose and that's where we are with this one. Some of the dowels were loose enough to be pulled out, but others I had to drill them out. Once all the dowels had been removed or drilled out, I could then take the main frame apart and then I could see what shape the tenons were in. They'd previously been hidden inside the joints, but now I'd be able to see how much work was going to be involved in putting them back together nicely. Here's a good example. I pull the dowel out and then I take the upright out of its socket only to see that the dowel has never really completely gone through the tenon and isn't really doing much of a job of holding it. Here we see one of the side frames with all the mortises or slots. First I've got to clean these all out and get rid of the detritus of ages and old bits of glue and bits of sawdust and general muck that's got in there so I have a nice clean slot ready to refit the tenon into. There's a similar treatment for the round holes where the uprights fit into, only this time I can clean them out with a drill. I 
and there's a nice clean hole ready for the upright to go back into and on the side you can see a hole drilled ready for the dowel to go through and hold it firmly in place. And there are all the parts laid out ready for inspection. All I've got to do now is to fix all the tenons and start the business of putting it back together again. So each of the mortises is cleaned out and there is a hole to allow a dowel to be pushed through into where the tenon will fit. Which would all be very straightforward if all the tenons were in good condition. Which, unfortunately, they weren't. This first one, for example, you can see that on one side of it there is a big chunk of wood missing, which severely weakens its ability to hold the joint fast. So I decided to rebuild the end of the tenon with a little bit of extra wood to make it whole again. Using a suitably sized strip of oak, I cut out a short piece and then trim it to fit into the recess that I've carved in the end of the tenon. I then shape the edge to fit the contour of the host and glue it into place. Looking at the rest of the tenons, we find each one has its own unique problems. Some of the dowel holes only just managed to go through the tenon. Some of them have been broken away through wear and tear over the years. And some of them didn't even go through the tenon in the first place. So taking each piece in turn, I repaired it according to what I had to work with. Some of them I put on a whole new piece of wood, and others I just had so little room to work with that I had to just put a thin piece of metal across as a bridge to hold it, which is all hidden inside the wood joint anyway, so none of it will ever be seen when it's all together. This one, for example, I cut off the damaged end of the tenon level with the outer end of the dowel hole. And then using a new piece of oak, I cut and shaped it to fit.
Once it was ready, I held it in place with wood glue and two very long thin screws so that it would end up being stronger than the original. And there we have a nice restored tenon, long enough to fit right deep into the mortise so that we can drill through and fit a dowel. Eventually all the tenons have their unique fixes and we're ready to try it all together to see if it works. So I pushed all the tenons in, pushed all the dowels in and we'll try and see if it holds together. Well that was all very satisfactory. I'm going to glue the main frame together and then get on with the upstand part. So I take it apart and put it all together again with glue this time and tapping all the dowels home to fix it all and hold it all together. hold the whole framework together with clamps while I tap the dowels home. That makes sure that it is all held together as tightly as it possibly can be. You'll notice that I made the dowels longer than necessary so that when it's all set I can saw them off and sand them flush with the wood and when it's all finished it'll look just the same as the original. Well that's two parts done, we've got the wheel finished and now the main framework. It's just the upstand left to do. The upstand consists of one thick piece and several smaller uprights to hold it in place. I'd noticed that the cross piece had been replaced at some point in its past by a fairly modern piece of pine which was completely out of keeping with the rest of the wheelbarrow. I think we can do better than that. Last year my son gave me some nice pieces of English cherry wood which had been sitting in the shed drying and waiting for a project and I thought a piece of that would do just nicely. I cut it roughly to length and then split it roughly into the size I wanted. You would normally use a log splitting tool called a fro for splitting logs like this, 
but I don't do all that much splitting from raw timber and I somehow never got round to getting myself one but this uh, machete type bill hook works perfectly well I still use it in the way that I would use a fro which is rather than using a chopping motion you place the tool on the wood in the place you want to split and then you beat it with a wooden maul that way you've got a lot more control over it you might find the fro mole being referred to as a beetle in some parts of the country. After that it was a case of using the shaving horse and the draw knife to plane it down to the size that I really wanted. The shaving horse and draw knife have been used for hundreds of years for shaping green wood and it's a very effective and very satisfying way of doing it. What I was aiming at was a piece of wood that looked as if it had been made by a wheelbarrow maker in the 15th century. I was happy using cherry wood as we know that cherry trees have been around in England since the Roman times or even before. One of the uprights had a similar problem to the tenons with a broken dowel hole. So I made it a little tiny metal cap so that the rod wouldn't pull out when the dowel was put in.
So now I've cleaned and dowelled the bottom end of the uprights into the framework, but now I need to fit the new rail onto the top end. Using the old discarded rail as a guide, I drill holes into the new cherrywood rail in what I hope will be the right places. The holes all look to be in the right place, so now I'm going to take the uprights one by one and make sure they fit snugly into the corresponding hole in the new rail. The tool I'm using to do this is called a spoke shave, so called because it was used for shaving the spokes of a wheel. You may have seen one of my other videos where I'm making a new leg for a chopping block and it's a similar kind of technique. You shave some off, try it in the hole and if it doesn't fit you shave a bit more off and try it again until you make it fit nicely. You might notice that I use a slightly sort of scooping motion on the spoke shave which is done deliberately to impart a slightly concave or hollow taper. This means that where it actually goes into the socket it only has a very very slight taper which makes it fit better. And then I repeat the process on all the other rods. You can actually see the concave taper quite well in the next couple of shots. It's a bit of a scramble now because I use a fast setting wood glue and I've got 14 joints to put together all the rods into the sockets, all the dowels through the pins and clamp it all up and get it all together before the glue sets. Fortunately it all went together quite smoothly.
So it's just left to tidy up the ends of a few of the dowels. Here I'm using what is actually a spoon carving knife, but it's quite handy for getting into little corners. And some of the new dowels put into the new rail to hold the rods. Then the whole thing gets a coat of beeswax and olive oil polish. And we give it a quick test. And it's finished.